The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. I want to change the the discussion to uh, Barack Obama. How has the name of Barack Obama been entered into your legal case, Michael? Well, I think there's been, I think there's been some confusion here. Uh, parallel, parallel with this case, my prosecution was uh, wholly opposed by the NSA, I believe, because the NSA, remember, got the satellite. As this water bath is dismantled, there's a huge spike in the radiation of this weapon. Before it gets safely under the water again, it's very vulnerable to detection, and the NSA detected it. So the NSA, from the beginning, the awful nice people, have never supported the prosecution and thought it was completely wrong. Um, sections of CIA also are very opposed to the prosecution. Somebody in CIA, uh, I am told, uh, some weeks ago, uh, distributed to a website with not, un not unknown to the CIA, um, an excerpt from a video briefing I had given to the Marlborough Research Group, a, a very good intelligence clearinghouse set up by a now 100-year-old intelligence officer called, uh, this is an American uh, program, Lieutenant Colonel Harry Beckoff, MBE, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Harry Beckoff, MBE, who was uh, General Montgomery's uh, intelligence liaison with Bletchley Park during uh, the run-up to the Battle of El Alamein. Um, Harry Beckoff was the man who took to Montgomery uh, the decrypts of Rommel's communications with the OKH and the OKW uh, in Berlin. He, he had a very important role to play. I, I'm glad um, they didn't arrest him. <laughs> well, it wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Now, Harry, uh, Harry chaired this meeting. I gave a briefing, which was picked up by perhaps 300 people on the Internet. All of a sudden, uh, it goes to an American website, and just in advance of the trial, and it goes viral. And there are suddenly two billion hits a day on YouTube. Now, clearly, these events are connected. But there's a further connection, because one of the operations that uh, Mr. Jones and I worked on was Obama. And that's going to come up during the course of the trial, because it's relevant. You see, the prosecution, Christopher won't be able to believe this, but the prosecution are following what I regard with respect as an almost insane strategy of trying to say I have no intelligence connections at all, even, even though they're calling a whole raft of intelligence officers who I've been speaking to on the cell phone uh, to try and establish what's going on, because I don't just pick up the phone and talk to the Minister of Defence. I'm speaking to intelligence officers, and all the guys I'm speaking to are heavy-duty intelligence and one was a wet work specialist for MI5. So we've got a, uh, the prosecution calling a wet work specialist for MI5, <laughs> trying to say he's got no involvement in intelligence. I mean, it's extraordinary nonsense. Uh, the, the prosecution have uh, completely put on the table uh, all of my intelligence links. Uh, and there are several hundred. They seized my diaries and address books. There are several hundred names and numbers in there. Now, I'm not going to blow those names and numbers in open court, but uh, the jury will see them as they go through the prosecution exhibits. And one of the things I have been working on was the Obama case, and that is, that is going to come out during the trial. But it's not going to feature in a major way, but it is undoubtedly going to feature. And the open-ended way in which the prosecution is being conducted uh, has allowed me, for as the defence, to put in issue any of my intelligence successes. And, and the conclusion, the determination that Obama was born in Mombasa in 1960 it was a, a pretty significant intelligence success. Um, and I think Christopher and I have the same view on this, do we not, Christopher? Well, I mean, I, I don't know where he was born. All I do know is that the document on the White House website is virtually certain to be a forgery. Well, I was actually not, called in by point. a firm of lawyers in Hawaii a couple of years ago to go over yeah. there, speak to some people, go to see the sheriff in Arizona, speak to him who's been investigating all this, yes. and then to do a mathematical report on the probability that this document could be genuine, given the various irregularities with it that have been found by the trained investigating officers of the police whose job it is to investigate these things. I met them, I talked to them at some length, I saw those parts of the evidence that they were able to show me because they were already public, and we discussed how they'd got this intelligence and what they made of it and why they thought what they thought. I did the mathematical report, put it in an affidavit, and swore it down the road here with my Edinburgh solicitors to send it off to them. And the solicitors read it and they said, well, this is the most interesting affidavit we've ever seen. What's going to happen now? And I said, I'd tell you that for certain. I said, nothing will happen. Once yes, you well, get right. beyond a certain level, you become untouchable. 
A huge well, crime I, has been I, I, committed here, probably against the American people, and nobody will lift a finger to do anything about it. Well, that may be true, although I have to say, uh, Krista, that there has now been, uh, Rick may be interested in this, uh, there is now a, a, a quite a serious legal strategy on the table. I'm giving evidence in the case in June that uh, has been brought by a very nice man called Christopher Earl Strunk in the uh, New York uh, State Supreme Court, and that's yes. being heard in June, on the, the June 17th, 18th. And I'm flying over to give evidence, assume, assuming, assuming the administration don't block my entrance to the United States, which uh, someone has threatened to do. And I, I didn't think that's going to get so. Far. So, Michael, what what do you know about Barack Obama's origins? My firm understanding is that he was born in Mombasa in what was then the Kenya Protectorate or the Coastal Protectorate. Uh, Kenya is slightly complex. The modern Kenya is derived from two territories, Kenya Colony, which is part of the British Empire, and Kenya Protectorate, which wasn't. It was part of the territory of the Sultan of Zanzibar. Now, your president was born a subject, as I've set out in Spy Hunter. He was born a subject of His Highness the Sultan of Zanzibar. Uh, in my view, my analysis is that he was born on August 4th, 1960. Um, his mother, the claimed mother, we can clearly exclude. Um, the bit that went viral was the bit where I had told the Marlboro Research Group about my advice to the CIA and the DIA, who's director and deputy director, by the way, about to be offloaded. I, I, I'm not sure why. Uh, I advised the CIA and the DIA at a very agreeable lunch at Claridge's, I think Christopher would agree that most lunches at Claridge's tend to be agreeable, uh, to obtain a DNA report on uh, Obama. And uh, the CIA had asked me, well, how do we get a DNA report on a presidential candidate? I said, it's easy, you just use wine glasses and water glasses. Uh, it's still not clear to me, uh, because everything then went very, very, the CIA went very, very quiet, obviously, as soon as the DNA results came in. Uh, and Obama failed them, and clearly the DNA test results clearly exclude any relationship between Obama and the claimed mother. Um, the you're, you're, saying that, you're saying that that the CIA had a, a DNA test of Barack Obama? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It was top of my advice. I'd done, I'd done something similar. I used to chair the Immigration Appeal Tribunal. I used to be an immigration judge. We had more experience, probably, on the Immigration Appeal Tribunal with DNA reports than I, I, it would be difficult to conceive of another judicial body having more experience of DNA. We did DNA. Remember, DNA fingerprinting was invented in Britain. I first used it in a case as long ago as 1985. So by the time I gave this advice, I had 22 years' experience of DNA fingerprinting. We used to deal with DNA reports from a company called Cellmark Diagnostics, a uh, division of ICL, most of the time. Uh, uh, ICI, rather. Uh, we used to deal with DNA reports day in, day out. And I was very, you know, up to the, I was very up to speed on DNA. I understood that you didn't need blood for DNA, uh, that you could do it with saliva. And with a British politician, uh, Christopher, I won't mention the name in a public radio broadcast, but an issue arose as to whether a British Labour politician was the father of a child that he was claiming to be his. Um, there was a dispute about whether another Labour politician was, in fact, the father. MI5 uh, sounded me out about it over an informal lunch. Christopher knows how these things are done. It was done at a military base. It wasn't done with serving MI5 officers for deniability. It was a very nice retired brigadier and a very nice usual story. Uh, a very nice little uh, lunch at a little military facility. Michael, somewhere. let me ask you, where, where did the CIA get the DNA sample of Barack Obama? Uh, from a wine glass at a, at a fundraiser. And the, the Secret Service, by the way, now protect the president's DNA. It, it, the Secret Service, well, you won't get anywhere near, you, nobody else can, you won't be able to do a DIY DNA test on Bar Barack Hussein Obama. I was told some weeks ago, and I have no reason to doubt it, the Secret Service now protect the president's DNA. And and that's another will... puzzle, because why would the Secret Service, whose job is to defend not just the person, but also the office of the president, knowingly protect a man who they presumably by now know is not really the president at all. Well, Lord Moncton, that, that, is the, that is the question millions of Americans have been asking since 2009. This radio program has devoted endless hours of interviewing experts who could easily be brought in as an expert witness in a trial to give evidence that, that there is something uh, irregular about Barack Obama's identity. 
And we're all puzzled because from the intelligence agencies down to Congress, the Speaker of the House, the U.S. Senate president, nobody, the Supreme Court, nobody will touch the issue. And I I have said on this program many times, Barack Obama could not get a national security clearance to be a janitor in a U.S. government warehouse let alone become the president well, of the United it's, States. Uh, security, it's social security number doesn't pass E-Verify. That's right. It? That's right. And, yeah. and one, of our, one of our guests... Correct. One of our guests ran his social security number through the E-Verify system, and it, yes. and it came out that it was fake, and she was, a, she was arrested for running the E-Verify. I know. This is, Mr. Jones got hold of that intelligence and passed it to me. And it's all, it's all part of the prosecution case. You can see how Obama is going to... Uh, how does Obama r- relate to a nuclear weapon, uh, a nuclear security scare in London? Well, the answer is that the, the CPS have illegally trawled through all my emails, and there's one from Mr. Jones re- re- relating to that exact piece of intelligence. And that is obviously going to be the subject of cross-examination of Mr. Jones. But Mr. Jones was right, and the lady who did the social security number check was right. Uh, the number, the social security number he has put forward is not a genuine number. Uh, it's a number that belongs to someone who died many, many years ago. It was a Connecticut, now, a Connecticut man. Connecticut, that's right. Who moved to Hawaii and he died at age 90. Yes, yes. exactly. Exactly. Now, that's not widely known, but it's, it, 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 there's going to be huge... I, I agree with Christopher. I think if this trial goes ahead, uh, obviously, part of me says, oh, bring it on, please, because it's going to be such fun. Uh, if the uh, and the judge is, if I may say, is a very nice judge, and it's a pleasure to be in his court. And um, part of me doesn't want the prosecution to drop this case. I mean, it's obviously a nuisance as a barrister to be prosecuted, but uh, part of me doesn't want the case to be dropped because it's going to be such fun. Um, we're going to have enormous fun with um, that particular email um, relating the details over the president's um, social I'll security. I'll tell you now. where I think the difficulty is going to come, though, Michael, and that is that, as I know, from having dared to question climate change and having dared to question whether Obama is uh, genuinely who he says he is, yeah. um, the, the left will attack savagely the personal reputation of anyone who raises these issues and the left-wing media which means nearly all of them now will brand you and me and anybody else who takes these stances as a lunatic and if you boat that together with your allegation which you know on the face of it does actually seem a little bit implausible that nuclear weapons were being sailed up and down various rivers in southeastern britain under on an old german submarine um people are going to say has this guy taken leave of his senses and well, course, i was talking to a very to senior congressman in my club in washington last year about this and i said look why won't you do anything about the Obama situation. He said, we all know he's not who he said he was. We all know that now, he said. It's absolutely clear. But none of us dares to say anything because the left will savage the reputation of the first person to put his name. Uh, uh, Lord Moncton, I... This is what they now do. Lord Moncton, I had a a, uh, U.S. congressman, I won't name, he told me privately, I asked the same question, yeah. And his answer was, Rick, Speaker Boehner has prohibited us from bringing up the subject. And that's for the same reason. Yeah, because Speaker he too Boehner's is job. terrified that, that uh, supposing that it turned out that everything was in order after all, then if the Republicans had been seen to be the ones to raise it, the left would never forgive them. There'd be the most awful kind of character assassination going on. Of course. Now, what has really happened is a complete failure of nerve and of courage on the part of every congressman and every senator. They've all received detailed briefings from several sources, including official sources, on this matter. They've all looked the other way, and they've not looked the other way in Congress because Speaker Boehner has told them to, because he has no power to tell them to. They are much more independent-minded and much more free to do their own thing if they want than we would be in the United Kingdom, in either House of Parliament. Um, But... The fact is they've all decided to funk it because they can 
find reasons. The ultimate reason does come down to this business of their being absolutely terrified that the left will savage their reputation. And the congressman put it to me, he said, look what they've done to you. They've even managed to involve the clerk of the parliament in the UK. They've paid him or whatever they may have done. They've got him to say that you're not a member of the House of Lords, which of course I am, so I have no right to sit or vote. Um, and uh, you know, they're, they're doing everything they can to destroy your reputation because you have effectively demonstrated what nonsense their story on climate change. Well, of course. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.